Okay, here's another one. f of x is given as this, and notice this time we have a fourth power on that. We're going to do the same three parts as before. Part A, we want to find the rational zero theorem. We're going to use that to find those rational real zeros. Okay, so first, I want to write the factors of the last number over factors of the first number. I want to write factors of six, the numbers that divide evenly into six. I'm going to put those on top. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two, and then I have plus or minus three, and plus or minus 6. Those are all the factors, the numbers that divide evenly into 6. On the bottom, I'm putting factors of 3. So plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. Don't leave your answer as this. You want to continue it and actually create a list of all these. So you're going to take all the numbers on top, divide by 1. All the numbers on top, divide by 3, and that's going to give you your completed list. When I go through all this, all the numbers on top divided by 1, you're just going to get the same numbers on top because 1 divided by itself is the same number. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. That's all the numbers on top divided by 1. Now I'm going to take all the numbers on top divide by 3. So the next one I'm going to do is plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2 thirds. Okay, now what I... The, the ending ones, I have 3 over 3, that's going to give me 1, I already have that on my list. 6 over 3 is going to be 2, I already have that on my list. So, if you're, if you're dividing all those, top divided by the bottom ones, and you get a number that you already have on your list, you don't need to write it again. That's why I stopped at 2 thirds, because I noticed that 3 over 3 is 1 and 6 over 3 is 2. I already have those numbers on my list there. So this is your completed list for part A. So now for part B, this is where we have to use synthetic division. So because we have a fourth power, we want to take this down into a quadratic, and we can use that to either use quadratic formula or factor to find the other zeros. So this is where I want to use either a graphing program or my calculator to figure out what those two zeros are going to be. So if I take a look at the graph, what I notice is I'm going to get two numbers that are going to work here. So again, you could do this by trial and error by, by testing all these numbers all the way through, or again, you can use your graphing program on it. Uh, so if you use, if you go through and, and look at that, what we're going to find is there's two numbers that work, negative one and two. Those are going to be two numbers that are going to work here. So it doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm going to start with negative one. There might, there's some other, other ones that it crosses as well, but these are, uh, these are ones I know that they're whole numbers. So when you look at the graph, you want to look for a whole number where it crosses because if it crosses at a fraction, you're not going to be sure where exactly it crosses there. So it's better to pick numbers that fall exactly on your graph there that cross through exactly at whole numbers on there that you can easily identify. So I'm going to use negative 1 here. And negative 1, I'm going to use the, the numbers from my uh, original one here. So I, I, I have descending powers. It's written in the correct form. So I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and put that in here, and then I'm going to use synthetic. So I have to do synthetic once, but I'm going to do synthetic again to bring it down into a square power, because every time I do it, it drops the power down by one. So let's do the first synthetic. I should get a zero for my answer. If it really is an x-intercept that I got from a graph, I should always get a zero as a result for my remainder. Drop down to three. Three times negative one is negative three here. We add that together, negative 14. We're going to multiply these together, you get positive 14, add that together, you get 13. We multiply this together, 13 times negative 1 is negative 13. Add that together, we get 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6, and there it is. We do get a 0 for our answer. So now, when I look at my graph, I see that there's another place where it crosses. I need to have at least one more zero to try with this because again right now if I were to put x's back in I'd have x cubed but I want it to be x to the fourth or down to x squared so I have to do synthetic one more time. So the other play, the other number that I would notice by doing either trial and error or by looking at the graph would be that I, I see that the graph crosses at 2. That's another one I'm going to try. Now instead of using the original one we had before if I just use the original one, it's going to give, give me another cube and answer again. I want to take it down into a square. What you do is you're going to take your answer that you got from the, when you did the synthetic the first time, you're going to put those numbers in right here. So I'm going to put 3, negative 14, 
13 and 6. I'm using the answers I got from the previous one to put into here and I'll do synthetic one more time. That'll take it down into a square and I can use that to factor and get the answer. So when I do synthetic here, 3 comes down, I get 6, add that together, negative 8, multiply, negative 16, add that together, negative 3, multiply, negative 6, and you do in fact get a 0 for the answer. We get a zero for the second time, that's going to be guaranteed you should get a zero again for that. So now, originally I had a fourth power, now it's taken down into a square. So what I have left is I have 3x squared minus 8x minus 3, and that's going to equal zero. I can set this equal to zero, and I'll find my answers. So when I set that equal, when I factor that one, I'm going to get 3x and x, and then I can use 1 and 3. Uh, and I want to get the middle one to be negative 8, so if I multiply this, I'll get a positive 9, so I'm going to put a negative next to that one and a plus, because I want negative 9 plus 1 to give me the negative 8. 1 and negative 3 is going to be negative 3, so that's the correct factorization for that. You're going to set that equal to 0, and you're going to get, uh, when you set it equal, you're going to get negative 1 third, so negative 1 third and 3, but don't forget about these two other ones that we found by doing the graph. So we're going to put those down there, negative 1 and 2. So this is going to be your list of, of re, uh, rational zeros. Negative 1 third, 3, negative 1 and 2. That's going to be all the numbers that will satisfy uh, the second ones. We're finding the zeros. This is where all the x-intercepts are. So if you take a look at the whole graph, we'll notice the graph's going to be crossing at all four of those numbers. So now we're going to use this idea to factor. We're going to do that for part C. We want to factor f of x. So part of my answer is already going to be this section right here, 3x plus 1 and x minus 3. So I'm going to, put, I'm going to start off by putting that, 3x plus 1 and x minus 3. But don't forget about these two guys. When you write those answers, remember it's always x minus whatever the zero happens to be. So I'm going to put x minus negative 1 means that I'll turn it into a plus, so x plus 1, and I'll have x minus 2 there. So this whole thing, all four of these, 3x plus 1, x minus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 2, these are going to be all the numbers that you'll, all the things you'll multiply together to equal the original one. So therefore, this is going to be factored uh, because all that multiplied will give you this original one, and all of them are going to go through it's going to have these as your x-intercepts.